Let me tell you something right now. I'm gonna get you, man. Yeah, I'm gonna get you. Uh, this guy's called the Standing Streamer. Wrestling with regret, and you're watching putting you over. Boom. Look at that. <clears throat> better, better late than never, is what they say. Where's my headphones? Hi, everybody. What's going on? Welcome to another episode. Wow, putting you over. Yep, know. we got a we got a good show tonight. Uh, Ref Ryan T. I don't know if he wants his last name being pronounced or not. I, that's up to him. But Ref Ryan T. You can find him at Ref Ryan T. R E F R Y A N. The letter T. And uh, we'll hear about his stories. A 14 year career, 14 year ref, and other things. We'll find out more about him. Remember, if you're hearing something you like, you have a question, get in. The on the line voice channel in Discord, discord.io slash put you over. Get in there. I also think while you're in there, you'll be able to hear the show. You know, like if you're on hold on the phone, you're able to hear the show. So I think if you're in the channel, you actually be able to hear the show. Um, I mean, if you're listening live on Twitch, anyways, that's cool. Uh, and then if I see someone in there, I'll pull them in, get a question in. But that's the plan for today. So I'll have Ref Ryan T at the top of the hour. Saturday, we're going to have Impact Wrestler Dave Christ from OVE. Ohio versus everybody. We'll have him on. And uh, and then maybe we'll talk to uh, Adam, Adam uh, Rotella from the 10 Pounds of Podcasts. Um, be like Stone Cold and get your beers prepped ahead of time. What are the chances I knock one of them over? Really good, right? All right, let's do it. Yo, yo. It should work now. Sweet. It it should. Working, working. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, yay. Cool. Yay, we did it. (laughs) <laughs> what's up man nothing much it's you know i live in a house with three ladies three daughters and they they love that there's like a, a setup they you know we're downstairs in my in you just hear them running we're downstairs yeah. in my in my bar you know play area and whatnot and and they see the whole studio set up and they're like wow that's so cool and they always touch things and they always want to Put on their own shows and whatnot, and <laughs> it's like the smallest setting that, in the heat of the battle, I couldn't figure it out. All good, all good, all good. <laughs> Anyways, we're lucky. Cheap, cheap bar though. It is. That's awesome. That's how my That's wife really uh, sold the house to me. I, n- I never, I didn't want to move ever because moving mm-hmm. is really sucks. And yeah, uh, this is how she sold it. So that's awesome. Yeah, so I'm glad you're on. I'm glad we had, we had a little technical difficulty. 
and uh, we're good to go. I just hear a small echo. It's myself because I get very loud. I don't know if it's loud at your end. I mean, it's it sounds fine. I don't hear any echo or anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, it oh. might just be me talking loud as normal, but we'll be fine. <laughs> Cool, cool. Well, it'll be cool. As long as there's no echo for you and you can hear me, it's fine. Um, awesome. You are a 14-year referee, is how I would yeah. say it. Yeah? Yep. Wow. Um, yeah. In the New Jersey area? Yeah. Yeah, I, I started off over in um, ECPW in Lake Hiawatha, New Jersey, in uh, January of 2000. Well, my first show was January of 2006. Yeah. yeah. It was sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your first wrestling memory? First wrestling memory was first thing that literally just came to my head was um it was a match, my first match ever. I don't know why it's like, but my first match ever was a guy named Solid Sugar versus this guy named Johnny Scout Eagle. Uh and my first match ever and they didn't know of a cool finish. I gave them like a sweet idea and then they went with it. And now it made me really feel like comfortable like People trust me from like day one, which is really cool. Wow, so that, it, that's like what, that's what a really so like you, just a good memory. You gave them a sweet finish. You were the ref, and you you pitched the finish there. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah. Um, it, it was really cool. Did you grow up? Was wrestling in the household, like on TV? I mean, I I live by this motto that everybody either is or was a wrestling fan. But was it mm -hmm. was it prevalent in your household? Yeah, so every, like uh, as you know, with my story, when I was a kid, though, like my motivation when I, when I was like battling uh, cancer and stuff was pro wrestling. Yeah. So it was uh, even from my, even before that though, like you know, being at such a young age, I knew I was watching wrestling at that time. I remember certain matches and stuff like that, or certain times I was watching wrestling. But uh, yeah, it was always always been something uh, with my brother and my parents and uncles and cousins. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, growing up, you know, did so. It it is me. It's loud on on my end. I'm just gonna ask this question and let you talk it through, so I can just go turn a knob down over there. Okay. Um. When did it click? So you're watching wrestling. You know, it's gonna be a part of your life in some mm -hmm. manner. When does it click with you that you want to go the referee route as opposed to a wrestler? Uh, well, I'll be honest, when I was younger, I, I used to backyard with all my friends. Like, who else didn't, right. you know? Who didn't? So, uh, like, everyone's guilty as charged. Everyone's open to start talking about it now, you know? Um, but, yeah, I used to backyard. Like, I started off, my first, like, time I did any type of wrestling, I was, like, 11 or 12. And then uh, I wrestled for a company called UWA, a back, you know, a backyard company. Yep. Um, but everyone was trained. So we had Arcadia, Mike Quest. Brian Brass, Eric Corvus, people from Jersey Zer Opro in a, a ring mm -hmm. over here in Cerebral. And now the company's still, uh, actually the company that runs in South River uh, for pro shows, which is awesome, which I'm still part of. But anyway, uh, when I was in college, I'm like, I need something else to do. And then I got some training from everyone over at ECPW and just signed up there and got trained by Gary, uh, Gary Morera who uh, was the head referee for ECW, but also a referee for Ring of Honor. And I basically got thrown in, like, after a couple of days. Just tossed right in. And huh? I, I, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Like, I, I mean, they, like, Gary was cool, so he knew I used to do the backyard thing when I was a kid. But, like, he actually saw that, like, I, I get it. It wasn't just like, oh, put on the stripes. No, I actually understood the concept and at such a young age. But it's always been, I thought, like, I think the art of the referee is really cool. And that's always been... Like, I'm very highly detailed with everything from work related to just everyday life, and I feel like it fits me perfectly. Excellent. You know what? I told you I was going to go around and touch that now, but I wanted to hear the story, so just bear with me a second. No, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, I know the knob was there. Okay. Enough. I know. No more fiddling around. Wasted enough. My time. bad. My bad. I forgot I was on that side. <laughs> it's, it's all, all right. right. Oh, man. 
So yeah, they always tell you don't don't do this at home. Don't try this at home. But all of us what? were in our backyard wrestling. Yeah, yeah all of us 100%. easily. Um, yep. and you're right. I think being a ref, I think there is an art form to it, and I think it goes underrated. And they're just they're the third. Well, you know, in yeah. theory, a one on one. They're the third man in the ring. They're the third wrestler in the ring, telling the story. Yep. And that's just uh, it's interesting. Like with uh, facial expressions and mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Um. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's so much like more detail than people really could really think of. That could uh, that brings a big part into the actual match or throughout the entire event. I'm like check like I'll, I'll be honest, and I say this on Twitter, yeah. and, like for the, and the before shows and stuff. I'll say I'll, I'll I'll be the first one to take the bump. I'll be the first one to hit the ropes so make sure everyone's safety is okay. What's, so I'm, I'm 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 very big on safety. What's the hardest bump you've ever taken? Um. I mean, when I rest, when I wrestled, I uh, I took a well from from injury perspective, I I broke my I fractured my jaw. I took Ooh. a, a Yakuza kick to the face in the corner, and then the three months or four months after, it was just a hairline fracture. And then I took a uh, I don't know what it was so I was hit, wrestling Monster Mac. Oh, I took a belly belly, and I that was all on me. I messed up. I took a belly belly monster from Monster Mac. It was him, myself and Magic versus him and. First Monster Mac and a little like Louis Ramos. Yeah. And and I just landed completely like just scorpion on my shoulder. It was terrible. Oh. But uh but besides that, like I took a uh from Chris Powers from uh UWA Elite. He actually uh is an actor on Gotham too, actually. I'm not sure on there. Huh. But uh he he did a uh a moonsault uh double stomp to me. That was pretty cool. And that's the same match I fractured my jaw too. <laughs> you didn't find out you fractured your jaw until after the night. Yeah, I mean, it was my mouth. Like I was spinning oh. up blood the entire match. But oh. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I I knew something something was wrong. And you've you've taken some pretty uh, taken some pretty good bumps as a ref too. I think I saw mm-hmm. which is the one that I just, was just watching a while ago. Um, Tessa Blanchard and it was in GCW. Nick Gage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I, I, I see that. Yeah, I see that. Uh, oh, was it ICW? I, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It was, uh, yeah, the, I was only supposed to take one, actually, but the crowd started to pop so good. Next, like, <laughs> let's do another. I'm like, sweet, let's do it. It's cool. No, 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 one more time, one more time. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I love bumping. Uh, it's, I, I miss the wrestling part, but I, uh, I want, it builds my resume, too. But. It makes me look different. From the, from the bumps I've seen you take as a ref, because I haven't mm-hmm. seen much of you as a wrestler, but as a ref. The bumps I've seen you take, um, they're not—they're not bumps for the sake of bumps. They go, they go with the match. They're, they go yes. with the story. They fit. So yes. you're not just doing it for the sake of doing it, which makes it uh, good. No, hundred percent. Like in um, GCW's uh, Run Ricky Run event, it was the three ref bumps, and then uh, Brett came out did his running as the, as a referee. But everyone had a different type of bump, and like. They, as people will say, like me and Nick have like a thing at every event. Like I will get bumped by him, but I have a reason for that. Right. Like I did slide through the glass and everything, cut my arm and everything. I'm like, whatever. Like let's get this match. Like I want Nick to win in a sense because I'm GCW against. But uh, yeah, man. Every everything I try to do has a. No, I won't say I try to do everything that gets given to me or that I do uh, bring up for a spot. They uh, it all has a meaning. It does. It fit and it works well too. Um, we talked about facial expressions and how you, when in your first memory you were you know you, you pitched the finisher, the finish for the match. Mm-hmm. Um, how involved? And I think you touched a little on it earlier, but literally how involved in the actual match that you're working are you? How involved are you with the other two wrestlers? If there's two wrestlers, the other wrestlers in the match, in how the match goes. Like how much do you know and. Like, I mean, without giving too okay. much away, like, how does that even work? I understand. Yeah. No, I mean, for, for how, how I do it, yeah, um, yeah. I bet you other people do it this way. But uh, if I have matches one, three, five, and seven, right? Yeah. So say there's only, like, two two referees on the show. Or if there's three, whatever case may be. 
if I'm listening to match one, say you're in match one, and you're going over your match, I'm going to listen to the entire detail of it because I want to know my my correct placement. Of course, I have to work a horseshoe where I'm not in front of the hard camera or anything, but and I have to watch out for mobile cameras, uh, the mobile cameras and such, um, and for fan perspective as well too. But my my ultimate goal is to remember the match just in case if somebody else has a question about if they're lost during the event. Right. And they need me to pitch off spot. I will, but that hasn't really happened often because the people I've worked with are so just greatly skilled. Um, but I'll be listening to match one right here, and then match three and five or three is right, like maybe like ten feet out, and I can't hear them, but I can see their ma- their mannerisms and such. And I'll, I I want to make sure my goal is to know that I know their match before they come up and tell me what the finish is. Nice. So they can both you could say I trust that I have uh, that they can trust me throughout the entire event or events uh, uh, coming up. That's interesting, and but, yeah. I mean there must be just just based on the amount of promotions that you ref for. One of them being Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore. You mm-hmm. there must be a lot of trust put in you. You're highly I would say up there in in uh, the list of refs. I mean, thank you. I you appreciate know, that. Um, people, uh, people like uh, what's her name, Aubrey Edwards. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, she's awesome. She is great. Um, have any other yeah. big promotions ever reached out to you? Big, I put big in quotes. No, no, no I understand. No, no one's uh, nothing like that. Um, it'd be the dream. It'd be awesome. But uh, I'm already like, if it doesn't, like, I can give you like two ways of saying this, but my mate. Like my, I could be like sad and be like, oh, you know, like I earned, no, no, it's, everything's timing. Everything in life's timing. Right. And if it, if it doesn't happen, it wasn't my time. Yeah. That's how simple it is. But like, also I've lived in a dream to hang out with my friends and get a reimbursement and pay, of course, yeah. for things I'd love to do. But just to be able to do this and still work my shoot job, it's awesome. I, 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 it's, it's... I I'm. I'm so I'm just so thankful for like even right now like for this like I wouldn't I would never met you no like for like if like we've never spoken to each other if I if I wasn't involved or you were involved you know it brings so many people together and that's why I love wrestling so much. It, it's weird yeah. because I I came across you, and I'm sure I I sure I seen you ref matches before mm-hmm. I, I'm sure of it it just never occurred to me, but I ran across you with the Retro Mania wrestling guys because. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I had them on this show way back, right when they first started yeah. getting into their game. So I've always been in contact with them. And then, like, they show me the list of the people. And then they show me the, the picture of the announcers and then the picture of the ref. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. it just, like, all clicked with me. Um, <laughs> What is that like? You're going to be in a video game. Yeah, that's uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty awesome. badass. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, it was... It's incredible. It's a great feeling. It's myself and um, the other referee, as of right now that I know. I'm not sure if there's other ones, but it's Pat Savino. Yeah. Uh, gonna play him, gonna play him over real quick. That's just for that reason. Yeah. He's been around for, for for wrestling for such a long time. Uh, he's helped me out a lot too, a lot with this stuff. Um, but uh, it's a great feeling. I expect like, as you know, uh, like I do um some charity stuff too. Yeah. And I was selling like promo pictures for the month of January, celebrating 20, 25 years cancer free. So every promo picture I sold for five bucks, uh, that money got doing all that money got doing to the Valley Run, and then Retro Mania Wrestling was like, "Hey, we want to match that." I was wow. like, "Okay, yeah." So like wow. they're even selling T-shirt. Yeah, so like the Tommy Dreamer uh, T-shirt uh, for Retro Mania Wrestling off of uh, Pro Wrestling Tees, a percentage goes to the Valley Fund Camp Happy Time as well. Yeah, that's cool. That is pretty cool. So like just yeah, it's a great. It's it's really cool being in the game. Right. Uh, I've seen the picture of it. I haven't seen myself like in the game yet, in a sense. But uh, it's a really cool feeling of some sort of a comp- like a really cool accomplishment. Have you played it yet? I've played the game. Yeah, I played it at a uh, House of Hardcore oh, last. House of Hardcore. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that was that was awesome. And how did that you? Really cool. How did that? How did you go about getting involved in that through Tommy? Because they were pulling in House of Hardcore. Yeah, it was uh, Tommy and. Uh, uh, the referee Pat Zavina, we're oh. all uh, there talking, and then uh, we're at another show down in South Jersey, and there uh, Retro Mania Wrestling was there, Tommy was there, 
and somehow everything just clicked together. Yeah, timing. Like I was you like, said. All right, cool. I was like, I was like, all right, sweet, and <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. Yeah, that, it's it sounds really simple and like as if that's not, not the story, but that's that's it. It's pretty much how it is. Right place, right time, like you said. Yeah. Um, I want to go yeah. back to the art of, of officiating a match. Um, mm -hmm. with like you said that you, you've studied the matches beforehand and, and you're reading body language and facial expressions during the match and stuff. You talked about the horseshoe staying out of the hard cam. The one thing I've always wondered, I, I a lot of times now when I'm watching matches, especially when I go back on the network and watch older matches, I watch the ref uh -huh. now. And mm -hmm. one of the things, and you hear it from the announcers all the time, they're like, oh, he's got to get in position. They gotta, and she's got to get in position, get in position, you yep. know, for the, the three count or, or submission or whatever the case may be. Yes. Are, do you have to get in a certain spot to, to make that three count? I've always wondered, like, well, why? Like, well, What's I like, the... Go ahead. Well, uh, there's different types of scenarios you can be put into. Yeah. Um, if you just say, just say a, a, a cover... Right. I'll just say I'm just gonna use myself as an example. Like, but this might sound weird, but if this is the opponent, right? Yeah. And you're hard cam, yeah. right? How, what I like to do is, and then this is the person. Just say this is the person's legs, like doing the pin. I like to go on the opposite side, so it doesn't make make so much clutter on that one area. Uh, hard cam side, you want be, you don't want to be in front of the actual uh, shoulders of the pinfall. Uh, I like to pin. I like to do my counts lefty or righty based off the the, the camera angle. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, so, like, I'm constantly thinking out there. It's not just a, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically, you want, main focus is the hard cam, mobile cam, uh, but also, you don't want to be overbearing the entire, uh, situations, uh, or spot, like, the, of the finish, or whatever case may be. Yeah, I've always wondered. I mean, I, I, I understood, I, I understood, but I just thought that it was, it was such, it, it, and then it starts becoming like a story within the match. Like, oh man, the ref wasn't in position or didn't get in position fast enough. And that's why yeah, yeah, yeah. it was only a two count. Okay. Okay. No. All right. So like, so for instance, there will be a, uh, um, for a, say a setup power bomb spot, right? Right. Uh, setup power bomb. Of course, you know where shoulders are going to be, but then that's where it comes down to, positive of being a wrestler in the past is understanding move sets and understanding people's actual people's move sets and just basic wrestling 101 right finishers and whatever case can be of knowing what the rep person's shoulders will be by the time that person makes that dojo a dojo bumper whatever case can be so it's it's really about your own knowledge and of course what size ring there's a lot there's a lot of more detail to it than just yeah because uh, i'm trying to put myself in thinking about it, like using mental in imagery, mm -hmm. and you're talking about the horseshoe, and yeah. you're talking about knowing your wrestlers, knowing their move sets, even mm -hmm. knowing when there could be a quick pin attempt for this. And mm -hmm. I mean, you're that is just a lot to keep up yeah. there, man. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's a workout, man. Like I, I, if I'm not sweating out there, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> that's, how, like, <laughs> yeah. that's how I see. It. Uh, but even even like sliding on your on your knees to get to the pin, it makes it, the pin falls more uh, yeah more meaningful. Um, I was I was watching a, a synergy pro wrestling event, the Fubar one, the one they put on recently, of all yeah. the old matches, and I I was watching you. You were doing, I can't remember which match it was, but it was a two count, and you just come up and you go two. <laughs> right in the wrestler's face. Oh man, I can't. Awesome. I was I was doing coverage for it um, for WrestlingNewsWorld.com. We'll plug them for a second. Yeah. And uh, so I was watching it, and I was taking a gift from it. And I'm like, man, I gotta get that gift of him just throwing the two sign up. It's just that's it's, awesome. It's so. I I really do. And I I say this to my wife all the time. I go, just watch the ref, Kel. Just just watch how the ref does things. And like, there's mm. there's this one guy. In, in AEW that comes to mind. I don't remember his name. I want to say Bryce something. Uh, yeah, yeah, Bryce Rosenberg, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, like, he'll be watching the, the two wrestlers, and they'll either be punching each other or chopping each other, and he just goes, he goes, mm -hmm. oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, right, right. Oh. Bryce is so, 
Bryce is so great with uh, facial expressions and mannerisms. He, like, he also deals, um, I think, at every uh, like main year week or throughout throughout the like the season or years of wrestling, he does uh, seminars too for just that type of knowledge. It's really cool and like yeah, I think he's actually running one right now. Yeah, he is. Uh, yep. The next couple of weeks, it's he like is. forty bucks for like twenty people. So it's, it's definitely gonna be well worth it for whoever gets involved in that. Price is awesome. Yeah, just... it's just it's just funny, and uh, <laughs> I I like I like the fact that um we, we have names to these refs now. Like the the referees mm-hmm. have, have names, like your your ref Ryan T. That that's how I mm-hmm. refer to you. You know, you got Aubrey, you know, you got Bryce, mm-hmm. you got um. There, there's there's plenty, like, plenty yeah, more. Yeah, Brian yeah, Hebner, Paul, one of Paul my favorite. AW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Kid Ref, Kid Ref's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, first, yep, no yep. you're my favorite. Kid oh, Ref thanks. is up there. He, Chris is awesome. He is. Chris is really good. And he's, really, really great ass job. He is, he's really good too. Um, we had Jimmy Corderas on here a couple, yeah. a couple weeks ago, and uh, he was telling us how he got started in, in the biz. And he's, he was just kind of hanging out, and, and uh, I think he was driving the wrestlers from the airport to the events and, and this and that. But it was the same thing, it was timing. They just came up to him and said, Look, man, the kid's hanging around the boys, you know, let's, let's. Let him. It was just like that. Just like yep. he's there, and it just all works out. It's, that's that's uh, awesome. It's weird, but um. Yeah. So you're the energizer ref, right? Yeah. If you're, if you're yeah. uh, been watching you on your Twitter since the whole coronavirus mm-hmm. stuff, you are one busy man. Yeah, I try to be. Right. <laughs> yeah, I uh, um. So like I work my shoot job. I'm a manager at, in a uh, warehouse facility. Yeah. Uh, so I can work up to like 40 to 60 hours a week, max of 60 hours, uh, 10 hour days. But my shifts Wednesday through Saturday from 5:30 a.m. to 4:30 or 5 p.m. And I just drive to any shows on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, in the tri-state area or whatever. Yeah. I like. And that. then I do. So, yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, it's a. Just trying to like, I mean, I, I honestly gave myself that nickname, but someone says like, one of my friends said to me, man, you're always all over the place. I'm like, I'm like, you're like, how do you not like, how do you have, oh, someone said, uh, how do you get like this much energy to do things like this that you like? I'm like, it's because stuff that I like. And then, yeah, that is, you can add up. I, I mean, I literally gave myself that, that gimmick name, but I wanted to market myself differently towards others. Yeah. Just to maybe people catch on to or something. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah, I mean, so Howard Stern gave himself king of all media. Look where that went, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why not? Yeah, man. You're 100% right. Um, yeah, I got that, the volunteer stuff, the volunteer at my church, all, yeah, it's, there's a lot, man. Oh, man, I just thought of something, too, when you were saying that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my I bad. Like, I like, no, it's okay. It happens to me all the time. Um, <laughs> I liked the, the little phrase you said, shoot job. I'm going to start saying that. Yeah. Man, I got to go to, oh, yeah. go to my shoot job today. Yep. Come yep. down here and do my my work work. That that's why, yeah, dude. Yeah, I like that. Um. Uh man, how is this? And I know this is a dumb dumb question, but um. It's cool. So the cor- it's dumb, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. My mom always says that. There ain't no dumb questions. Um. The coronavirus stuff hit us all, or us. Yeah, I guess it does hit us all. But uh, the independent wrestling scene too hit it really bad. Um, how has that changed how, you know, you do a typical day as a, as a referee or a typical weekend, I guess, as a ref Mm -hmm. now that, I mean, there's nothing going on. I, I'm, it's weird. It's hard. I would imagine. It is. Um, but like, like I'll, I'll FaceTime my friends, talk to my family and stuff like that, parents, brother, whatever, you know, um, of course, virtually or whatever case would be. Yeah. But uh, it's it stinks. But like you know, like got roll with the punches. Like it's like am I just trying to sell this? Just be honest. It just yeah. okay. I could say okay. This, there's I can tell myself this really sucks every day, or yeah. this like I hate this one, or I can just be like all right, cool. Like think of the positives. Yeah. I got to do this all day. Like I got to do this in my entire life. And if, if like if my last show was GCW, mm-hmm. like at the uh, Asic, uh, Asic up too. 
like if if that was the last one, it would be hurtful. Would it stink? Yeah, but I still got to do all that. You still and I, and I, I, I'm very upbeat with things, man. I think things will get progressively get better and stuff. So like, does it stink? Yeah, but there's always things you could do. Like I'm working out even more now. I'm uh, talking to my friends more than I have in the past. Oh, yeah. Stuff like that. I'm always trying to keep myself busy with things I'm not doing. I like, never used to do as much. I would have to say, and correct me if I'm wrong completely, mm-hmm. but this drive that you have, and, and I say it's a drive, this drive you have to to make, I think you said you just want to make people happy. This drive you have to make people happy, to be your best at what you do, especially as a ref, with everything you're doing with the Camp Happy Times, the Valerie Fund, all that. This this drive stems from you beating cancer. Yeah, right. Everything. I mean, th- that's your. This is when you're when you were just talking about that. Explain it to me. I'm like, that's that's exactly how he thought when he when he was fighting cancer. Hundred percent. My last my last day. Like, I'll, if that's cool, if I can share. This with no, you guys. go ahead. You... Uh, one of my last days, and thank you. Um, of taking. I don't, I don't know exactly what it was, but I took this. It might be like a spinal tap or something. They were yeah. checking something in my in my spine. And I'll never forget, I was so drugged up from whatever medication they gave me. And I fell back to sleep. Um, because that, that uh, like, um, it's, it's, I'm stuttering because it's like, I remember, I can, like, if I could draw and show you how it was, like, yeah. it's incredible. Like, what I'm about to say, for me, it's terrible. So anyway, I remember falling asleep and had this vivid dream for some reason, like, this very detailed dream of me being in a wrestling ring. And, like, I had all these people with shadows behind me. Like, just silhouettes almost, you know? Like, yeah. And I, I'm, like, either, I think I was either seven or six. Wow. This will make my last couple of years of doing this. And I remember opening something up in a restaurant, like a box, and popping up and just, like, being, you know, like, like I don't want to say energized, but, like, I was, you know, awake and everything. Yeah. Right there and then I'm, like, okay, I have people behind me for what reason? And that entire concept of getting getting wanting to get involved in wrestling is like I want to make people happy. I love wrestling. I think it brings people together. And I think this kind of all adds up and the reason why I can't give up on wrestling, even if I don't make it big. Right. It's because just I just love doing this. Like it's always so like even at such a young age and people can say, Oh like okay, you're four, you're sick, you maybe just like a crazy dream. It's I'll tell you dude, it's something that has been with my life for forever and i will never forget that and i'm going off a little bit off this but just like it's fine that's what that's what brings me to like helping out people so much more and making people like i'll say say hi to fans in the lines all the time like outside because it's just like thank you yeah that's all like that's yeah and you can hear it yeah when you when you told that story you can hear it come out of your voice the the passion and, and the love in in the gratefulness, the thankfulness that you have. It's 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 really it's something to hear. Um we're gonna try I'm gonna try something interesting tonight. We've done it once mm-hmm. on the sh- on the show and uh it worked and I'm I'm hoping it works tonight. But we actually we have someone that wants to ask a question. Uh oh, cool. and I think I can pull them in and you'll be able to hear them and they can ask. So the, re- Let's reason, try. Yeah, yeah. the reason I'm talking slow is so they can hear it on the Twitch and then know. I'm going to pull them in. Uh, their name is Mr. J. So let me pull them in and see what we can do here. Okay. All right. Uh, well, you're on, Mr. J, if you have a question for Ref Ryan T. What's up? It might because there's a delay in what he would be hearing. You know, I could type it in the chat. Um, if he If he comes to, he'll – We'll hear them, so um, I'll ask it. Um, in the meantime, what did I want to ask you? I already asked you about the refs. Oh, team body spray. You wanna, you oh, know? oh man. Uh, do you want to elaborate oh, on hear, that? Oh, I hear somebody in the background, by the way. I'm not sure if you hear that. No, I don't. Oh, oh I do. Yeah, they're not coming in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag them out. I guess it wasn't working, Mr. J. You can you can type it in the chat and I'll read it to him. I haven't fine tuned that setting yet either. Oh my god! Oh, it, it was like it was sad. I'm sorry. No, but, it's um, fine. So, 
team bias spray, and also for whoever's typing that, thank you for that question, whoever it's going to be. Uh, team bias spray is myself and uh, TJ Blade in UWA Elite in South River, New Jersey. Uh, I did a, uh, a social media gimmick, a Twitter gimmick, when I never even had Twitter at the time. I was like 23 or 24. I don't know what I was doing. You did a Twitter and gimmick was, and you didn't even have Twitter? Yeah. That's yeah, great. Like, <laughs> but but, but well, we went with it, though. It was like, it was like a... a like, like, oh, like commentary would be like, you know, I think he has like 13 followers. And they're like, oh, that's not, that's not Ryan. That's not, uh, that's not, uh, my, my gimmick name was RJ Gerhardt. At the time. Okay. And they're like, oh, RJ doesn't have, a, he doesn't have Twitter. He's like, yeah, he does. So they just made like a, a shoot joke over it, uh, which was funny. awesome. But uh, yeah, like it was really good. I uh, mean, uh, TJ Blake, he's, he still wrestles there now uh, with a bro in the team called the Bro Team Pack. Um, but yeah, he's, he's really good. Uh, we had some really cool spots, but it was like a comedy, comedy gimmick, but it was fun. Yeah, he came out with, he literally came out with an axe bias brand, bias spray thing and just sprayed the fans. Whatever That's works. That's all it was, and I would record them, and just like get the character, like it was over. It was cool. It was popped. Um, yeah. Why don't you, uh, can you tell me a little bit about Camp Happy Time and the Valerie Fund? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Valerie Fund is a um, nonprofit organization, 501c3, based out of Maplewood, New Jersey. They uh, are the hospital that saved my life. I was treated at the Valerie Fund, Newark, Newark Beth Israel Children's Hospital, um, when I was four till I was seven. To this day, I still give back. Uh, I volunteer as a counselor there. I do supply drives and toy drives for them. But what the camp is, the camp is a, uh, it's a camp for kids who are diagnosed or have or uh, diagnosed or have been diagnosed with cancer and or blood disorders. It's about 150 kids each year, oh. and the, and yeah, so it's like a one week free camp for any kid who's ever been diagnosed with anything like this. So it's not not just the Valley Fund; it could be anyone involved. Uh, I'm sorry, not involved. I apologize. Anyone who's had this type of yeah. life threatening disease, and uh, yeah, so I've been I was a camper there from when I was like nine or ten, and then a counselor uh, since I was like 22, and um, yeah, it's a one week camp. And uh, so many people have helped out in the past, like Tommy Dreamer's done a, a video saying hi to all the kids. Uh, Killer Cross has done a video saying hi to all the kids. Brian Cage, Ethan, uh, Ethan Page, um, so many different people. Rhino, but yeah, it's it's I, I love it. I can't wait to go back this year. Yeah, wow, four to you were, yeah. you were from you were age four to seven. Wow. Yeah, when I had yeah when yeah. I, I leukemia yeah yeah. Oh, wow, you are yeah, a yeah, strong yeah, individual. Thanks. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. So we got that question. Yeah, so the 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 caller, the listener, whatever you want to call them, they mm -hmm. say, with the giant changes to WrestleMania, they're wondering from a ref's perspective how you felt about how the WWE changes how refs act. Uh, for example, they they used to write refs as blind and unaware, and at WrestleMania they were eagle eyed. I'm just curious about your opinion on that. Oh, okay. So I think they, uh, thank you for the question, uh, by the way. Um, that, mean, that means a lot. Uh, WWE is very, uh, I, I, I don't want to speak for them, but I do have a couple of uh, friends and people I've worked with on the Indies that uh, work there. But uh, the referees are super detailed in their, in their matches. So like right now, you may think that the, the WrestleMania, that they're just more vocal or more, on the spot with everything. No, this actually, if you look back at the last 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, it's been this new structure. Um, and you might notice them more because how vocal they are coming across because there is no crowd reaction. Mm -hmm. You may not notice them, be, uh, you might be noticing a little bit more for the fact of because there's the camera may be trying just to fill them to like film them together and like, you know. Uh, so it takes away the empty space throughout the crowd. There's so many different factors, but uh, there. In in the past with wrestling, it used to be like, oh, uh, I didn't hear, I didn't see a tag, but like there's a, a blind tag or, or like a the the work comes in. There's two workers in the ring. They both do the tag. Yeah. No, like they don't want wrestling. It's not made to make us look uh, stupid, quote unquote, stupid anymore. It's uh, they want us to look as realistic as possible. That's why if you see on NXT, every referee is like in great shape you know like there's my big thing is in wrestling as a referee is that 
uh, like big John McCarthy, uh, the UFC, he is a trained MMA fighter. So if you want to be able to protect yourself in the ring at all times in the UFC, it should be the same concept. I should be able to look like I can take down somebody or be so into it that like I'm not scared to back down from someone else. Mm-hmm. That's my perspective of mania and just wrestling as a referee in general. In general. That's great. Yeah. Um, we, uh, it's been a past tough couple of days in the wrestling world with all the let goes yeah. by the WWE. I mean, that was tough. There, the, the ref up there, Mike uh, Kyoto. I think that's how I say his name. Yeah. 30, yeah Mike Kyoto, he's yeah. been refing up there for 30 years. Yeah. It's a rough time. Yeah, it's, it's, and yeah. then, yeah, no problem. Thank you for asking the question, Mr. J. And, uh, and then today with the, the passing of Howard Finkel, I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that literally that crush. is a voice like, when I think of wrestling, when my when I think of my first wrestling memory, mm. Howard Finkel is one of the first ones that comes to mind because he was the voice you heard. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's that rough couple of days. Uh, uh, I, like the when the uh, when Howard Finkel passed away, that, like I actually shared a couple of tears. Like yeah. that's, that's that hurt. Um, still does. Uh, yeah. But I never like I almost I can't speak on anyone's behalf, but I do know everyone in the wrestling world is definitely hurting from that significantly uh but um it's just been t- it's been rough. Well, god, god bless the this family too yeah what well, was that i said it, it's sorry. just been it's been rough the past couple of days yeah when i heard the news uh yeah. of howard finkel i told my wife because he's so revered that even my wife like knows who he is and whatnot mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and then i just you know I was I was down. I was down. Just yeah. like like somebody just kicked me right in the chest. It's, it, it's your childhood, like like that's <laughs> I know. like yeah. I I totally understand. Yes. It, it, like I, yeah. I, I even with the uh, with the the town being uh, like like go recently. I mean, there, another door will open for everyone. Yeah. And maybe maybe that maybe that same door will open back up, and I I can only pray. Like I honestly do pray for everyone to succeed in any any type of way somehow. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, that's that's the type of you. You are, you know, Colin uh, from Synergy. When I I told him I was interviewing you, and mm-hmm. he had nothing but great things to say about you. Awesome. I cool. mean, and you 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 come off phenomenal. Your story is is really good. And Thank you. Just, I mean, just the fact that you battled through cancer from being how young you were, that's, I, that's kudos to you, man. I, I appreciate that, man. I, I even, pre- like, and I'll be honest with you, like, I'm not just, I'm going to put you over real quick. Uh, <laughs> so without everyone watching this and listening in, whatever, just the, uh, I actually had a bell on this guy on last, last week, but he was professional enough to understand and respect the, what uh, I had to do. Mm-hmm. Uh on last last Saturday, so thank you and kudos to you for uh, just being a professional at this. Yeah, I uh, I totally understand that when I when I started doing, like I'm a big wrestling fan, obviously, but when I when mm. I started doing this whole aspect of of doing a wrestling show and trying to get people in to talk about their story, about literally about whatever they want to talk about, you mm. know, I I I told myself like, look, there's going to be times like people are going to, you know, have to cancel or people yeah. are. I mean, I had Brian Pillman on this show, Brian Pillman Jr. It took saw, us, yeah, yeah. it took us a year to get that show. I had him the first time, and mm. we were we were all set up to do it, and then he never he never showed up. And mm. but I'm I'm a I like to think of myself as a good guy too. So I was like waiting and waiting, and he sends me a message back apologizing. He's like, oh man, I didn't even I was flying overseas. I had a match a thing over here, and mm. I totally forgot. And, but I understand those things, and and I was like, that's fine, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna no, bury you. No, no, that's no. Brian's really cool. I've only worked with him a few times, but he's awesome. He's a great dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, that that's awesome, man. And I also, also real quick, that T-shirt's awesome. That's your oh, rock in there. That's sweet. My uh, my shoe. I I. You know what? This is also the first time I've ever hooked up another camera for my guest. Usually, my guest just sees the little logo. Because my camera's on uh, Twitch, but I changed some things today, so you can actually see me. Oh, cool! 
I wore this actually a couple reasons. One specifically for you because it was oh, it was your Twitter that showed me uh, the other AEW shirt for autism that they have. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was yours. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And so I bought that one. My shoot job is I work with children with autism. I've done it for fifteen okay. plus years. Uh, That's awesome. A behavioral specialist type of thing. Um, so, so yeah. So there's my That's story awesome. with that. No, it's awesome, man. Uh, like, well, thanks for what you do there. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's it's hard That's right cool. now because none of us are in. We can't be in school, and yes, I work really well hands on with them and mm. and that's where i'm i'm my best that's when i'm on my a game is when i can be one to one with them and all that jazz and they need to be in school and they're not in school and yeah and it's tough i reached out to mick foley because i know his his son is on the spectrum and he did a he did a little video he, well he was doing the free foley videos yes. on his twitter i saw that yeah. so i reached out to him and he did a video uh, for my students saying, you know, awesome. keep it together, keep it up, doing this, blah, blah, blah. So, yes. So that's, that's cool. That's my story with that. And, uh, awesome, man. Yeah. I try to make people happy cool. when I can, too. That's awesome. That's what it's all about, dude. Yep. Like, yeah. Like, of course, everyone's first goal is themselves. And then to help out, like, it only makes you feel good, dude. Yep. 100%. Yep. Um, well, you know, and another thing I, I like to live by on this show is I, I never want to keep anybody over an hour or, or anything like that. And, and, okay. you know, we had, we had a little technical difficulty, but I think we, we've had a good spot here. We're nearing up on the hour and well, let's see, what have we learned? Uh, we have learned that you're very driven and uh, you, you, you persevered. We learned you're an energizer referee. And I think you, I think you've refed in every promotion on Fight TV. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you might, you might be right. <laughs> you might be right. Thanks. You are going to be in a video. One down right now. You're gonna be a video game yeah, character. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm gonna talk with the guys because because you have rest as a wrestler history. I want you as a playable character. I'm gonna see if I can get that done. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, you like That's to, cool. You like to <laughs> make people. Do you like to make people happy, and uh, doing the, all the great stuff for the Valerie Fund. Um, I, 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 I totally relate with that as well because I raise money for St. Jude every year. Uh, awesome. All the time, like I'm doing yep. it now. It's just, it's, it's just something I do. Uh, oh, oh, your parents. Uh, how did they mm -hmm. enjoy the Easter egg hunt? Oh, they loved it, man. Did they? Oh, they had, yeah, they had a ball. They, they, yeah, my mom was cracking up. My dad was cracking up the entire time. Yeah, but I was so. I, 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 I might put the video on, but I, I had trouble uploading. I'm not sure if it actually got posted. I think, I think but, you did. I think it got up there. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. Remember my mom, like, my mom, like pushed my dad to try and get one of the eggs. It was awesome. <laughs> it was. They, it, they won twenty nine dollars. Did they that really? Cool. There, that's all yeah. that matters. <laughs> that was cool. Um. All right. And so today's actually their anniversary. So. Yeah. What? I, oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, nice. That's cool. Um, so this is the time of the show where uh, I give you the mic, and you can put yourself over. You can put over whatever you want. Tell us what's what you oh, got cool. coming up. Uh, whatever you want. Floor's yours, Ryan. All right, sweet. Uh, well, first off, again, thank you for uh, putting me over on your awesome uh, Twitch channel here. This is sweet, man. So I appreciate you even reaching out to me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, true pro right here. So everyone should be listening to this guy. He definitely knows what's going on. Um, he actually he definitely does his homework, and I can tell by the way you're speaking. So great job with that. Ex excellent job. Thank you. Um, uh, but on top of that, uh, just a quick shout out to all the companies I've worked at, uh, currently just I work for. Uh, I'm not going to go through the line, but everyone knows who they are uh, as in promoter-wise. Um, not to try, try and sound like you can see there, but main thing is going uh, new people over I want to recommend to you uh, that maybe people don't know of. Uh, and to whoever's watching or listening in, a uh, gentleman named Matt Virgo. Uh, he wrestles for Pizza Party Wrestling. He recently just wrestled for Chikara. Uh, I think only one event, but still he wrestled for Chikara. Uh, UWA leads his home company. Uh, very, the guys, the dude's like 6'1", 6'2", super agile. He can wrestle any style. Great characters. He wrestles as a heel, but 
Like, he's one of those dudes, like, you're going to love him just because how great of a wrestler the guy is. Uh, Robbie Roller, also a UWA elite guy. Um, he's our champion over there. He, used to, he actually started off wrestling in Beyond Wrestling before Beyond became Beyond. such a bigger uh, landscape. Uh, but those are two people I highly, highly, highly recommend everyone checking out because uh, it's talent that is unnoticed because there's so much there's so much great wrestling already. But then you have people who are like these two who definitely should get that spotlight from some somewhere, and I think it will happen. But but besides that, thank you again for having me on here. It was awesome. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we'll be in touch, man. Awesome. Cool. Have yourself right, a wonderful thanks, night. Dude. Thanks for dealing with the technical difficulties. Oh, dude, I could, we'll blame it on me. It's all right. <laughs> all right. Later, all right, cool. man. All right. Bye. Later. Later, dude. Peace. Yep. Man, I loved it. It was great. He, he is very inspirational and uh, motivating. I mean, he just makes me want to go do something. You know? He, he makes me want to go and be a better person. And... Uh, and I wasn't kidding, man. You you go on to Fight TV, you pull up any promotion on Fight TV. Any promotion. Okay? And pull up one of the shows. Free show, free pay-per-view, whatever. Whatever it is. I bet you he's on there, refing. Somewhere. He's <laughs> kids everywhere. And uh, I will see you guys all Saturday. Thank you for coming by. Peace. No, not even that works. Uh, this guy's called the Standing Streamer. Wrestling with Regret, and you're watching Putting You Over.